Hello, and welcome back to yet another board game channel, where we are playing yet another round of Mangers of Madness, second edition, the Cycle of Eternity scenario. Uh, last episode didn't go super well for our investigators. They kept going at the, uh, the hunting horror and just couldn't take it down. And in fact, they all got horribly frightened. Um, by the thing. Um, Mandy in particular is not going to get to do much this turn. As she is dazed, which means she can't use any clues. She doesn't have any. Uh, restrained, so she can't move. And stunned, which means she can only kind of perform more than a single act. Yeah, she can only take one action during this investigator phase. Um, I have an idea what I want to do for this first turn, uh, so let's just get right into it, and I'll bring our scenario back up on the app. Resume saved game. Confirm. Uh, just wait for the quote to go through, and begin scenario. All right, first thing we're going to do, I'm going to start with Dexter. The Hunting Horror, I believe, only has a single hit point left. Yes, it's taken four out of five damage, so let's hope that Dexter can take out the Hunter, because that means Mandy will actually have something to do this turn. She'll be able to talk to Eugene the Butler, who just won't say anything, to us as long as the horror is alive. So, Dexter is going to attack with his knife. Attack with a bladed weapon. You try to anticipate the monster's actions, slashing and dodging accordingly. He's going to roll his observation and he needs two success. So observation is three. Okay, let's do this, Dex. <sighs> no, he's only got a single clue, which means he can only turn one into a success. There's no point. So, he has failed. The creature's movement is altogether too alien, and you barely keep from dodging directly into the monstrous strikes. So, for his second act, Dexter is going to attack it again with a bladed weapon, and hopefully have some success. Cursing yourself as a lunatic idiot, I'm tending to agree with these people. You rush toward the monster, then at the last moment drop into a slide. Test agility. Need three, six, uh, two successes. His agility is also... Three. Come on, Dex. Thank you, Dexter, for rolling like a boss there. If you pass, your momentum carries you safely beneath the monster's grasp, and you leave a long, ragged cut on its underbelly. The monster suffers damage equal to the weapon's damage, which is one, plus your test result, which was three, which means you just did four but it only needs one more damage. If only Dexter had done this last turn. Oh well, so be it. So, it's the first time we're defeating a monster, so we'll just show what that looks like on the app. We choose its last hit point. Are you sure you want to discard the hunting horror? Confirm. Ah, the creature lurches to the ground dead. Hearing the monster's final fate, the old man in the kitchen cautiously steps out. Move Eugene as indicated. Ah, which means we can't do anything with him this turn. Ah, uh, that's annoying. Because that means that Mandy can literally do nothing this turn because she can't move over to talk to Eugene. 
So, her turn is nothing. However, at the end of her turn, she discards all of these status problems. So let me just put those back on their piles. And that will be the end of the investigator's phase. We're going to activate the mythos phase, but at least the hunting horror is down and will not come after us. So hopefully it will be a pretty uneventful mythos phase. Let's see. End investigator phase. Dexter Drake runs frantically from some unseen evil. Dexter? Um, only to lose his footing. Uh, we're rolling his agility of three, and we need two successes. Oh, but he just pulled it off. Yes. If he passes, he stumbles, but catches himself before falling. Yes, calm down, Dexter. Everything's fine. And that was it. That was the whole mythos phase. So, on to our next turn. So, yeah. Um, let's start with Mandy, who can now do all of her normal actions. So, her, for her first action, we're going to move her two spaces. And then, we're going to talk to Eugene. The app reads, The old man brushes himself off and tries to calm his shaken composure. You came just in time. Thank you so much for saving me. The name is Eugene. We spoke earlier today. I have heard noises from the attic, but the door is locked. I think something bad is going to happen. Okay, that's interesting, because the first time I played this, there was something bad going on in the backyard, not the attic. There was no mention of the attic. Okay, that's interesting. So, we have a couple of dialogue choices. We can say, are you okay? Or, where is Mr. Vanderbilt? Playing this the first time, um, my group went with, where, where is Mr. Vanderbilt? For Va Vanderbilt. So, for some variety, I'm going to see what happens if we choose, Are You Okay? The butler puts on a weak smile, and the two of you chat for a minute. By the end of the conversation, he seems calmer. Please, take this with you. It has always brought me luck. Gain the Lucky Rabbit's Foot common item. So let's just look that up. Lucky Rabbit's Foot. which is listed as a bit of equipment. Once per round, you may re-roll one die. So Mandy now has the Lucky Cigarette Case and the Lucky Rabbit's Foot. Oh, we might trade one of those off with uh, to Dexter, because he could use some luck as well. Uh, then each investigator in the dining room and kitchen, that would be everybody, discards one horror. Well, I'm glad we decided to ask Eugene how she was feeling, how he was feeling. So that uh, Mandy gets rid of her only horror. Dexter will get rid of, we'll say, this one, which leaves him with just two horror damage. So that's nice. That turned out well. So, uh, as for Dexter... Uh, should we explore a little more in here? We probably don't want to stop and explore every single search token, as um, that'll probably slow us down. I'm fairly certain that our mystery is on some kind of invisible timer, and we've only got so much time to solve it. However, he's already in a space with a search token, so we might as well have him uh, have a look at the China cabinet, repurposed to store all manner of knickknacks. So we will choose Search for his first action. The cabinet holds candles, wooden statuettes, stones, beads, and other random objects. You try to discern what they could be for. So we're going to test... <coughs> yeah, good. We're going to test Dexter's lore, which is a five. And we're going to say, we're just going to tell the app how many successes we get. 
only one. Do I dare use his last clue token to change that to a two? Yeah, you know what? Let's do it. Because he could, in fact, get a clue back from searching. It does happen. So we're going to do two successes. As you dig through the objects, you begin to form a hunch that makes you uneasy. You have heard of objects such as these found at the site of occult rituals. They would prove useful to your investigation, could uh, prove useful to your investigation. Gain the circumstantial evidence unique item, uh -huh. and one clue. So he gets the clue back, and we discard the search token. So let's just look for the circumstantial evidence. There it is. We've got a keyword of evidence. Uh, just a bit more and the case is solved. I find that unlikely, but we will see. All right, and for his uh, second action, I want to move him one space so that he will be in a position to trade right away at the beginning of the first turn. Remove him in here and then have Mandy join. Yeah, let's just do this. Otherwise, we're just going to keep leapfrogging. And that doesn't seem very efficient. All right. So that um, was a very short turn. A lot, of the tur a lot of times the turns are short when there's not a whole bunch of combat going on. So let us move on to the Mythos phase. The ground suddenly gives way, revealing a vast and cavernous emptiness. This Mythos event affects the investigator in an outdoor space with the lowest lore. As you can see, we have the options Resolve Event or No Effect. As nobody is outdoors, No Effect. How about that? Ooh. Oh dear. A robed figure bursts into the entrance and yells, There's someone here! You hear a muffled response from another part of the estate. Get rid of them! Spawn a witch as indicated. So, uh, just give me a minute to find a witch. All right, there we are. We've got ourselves a witch. And let's have a look at her flavor text. From the outside, there is no trace of evidence that this being has made a pact with infernal powers. True corruption must lie within. Uh, anyway, the witch spawns in this great big space here. The witch moves up to two spaces to be within range of as many investigators as possible. All right, um, that would be like so. Doesn't say she moves up to her range, she just moves two spaces to be within range. Uh, then it attacks the investigator within range, who has suffered the most horror. Currently that is Dex, still. Oh, I forgot to get rid of Dexter's clue token. Uh, di discard, uh, dazed condition. I really have trouble with the word condition for some reason. Get rid of his dazed condition at the end of his turn, which meant he was okay. No, he was not okay to use that clue token. Sorry about that. He shouldn't have been able to use the clue token. We will just have to leave it as is, um, because I can't back up. Totally forgot about that. Sorry. Uh, anyway, it's attacking uh, Dexter, who still has two horror. So, the monster attacks. The witch shatters an archaic funerary urn, and in the puff of powdered ash, you see the faces of the forms of many dear departed friends. Flip two horror face up. Well, that would be his only two horror. So we're going to be turning these over and getting the effects from them again. Startled, you stagger backward in alarm. 
resolve immediately, no effect, discard this card. Well, that's nice. It actually helped a little because he got rid of that one. But the other one was Horrific Arcana. You whimper as your mind rejects the impossible, resolve immediately, suffer one additional face down horror for each spell you have. Then flip this so he gets another horror card. But it is face down, so we will not suffer the effect right away. Right, the rest of it. The specter has become more and more real, reaching out with hungry arms and tearing at you. Suffer three face down damage, which can be negated with will, plus one. Which means he's going to be rolling four dice to avoid taking this horror. Come on, Dex. Well, he blocked two of them. So he will take one more face-down horror, which puts him back up to three. Not too bad. However, of course, now they have to do, both of our investigators have to do a horror check for the witch. So we will choose the witch, resolve a horror effect. For a moment you think you understand the source of the witch's strange powers. Suffer two face down horror. Uh, lore plus one negates. So that's good for dex, because that means he'll be rolling six dice. So let's start with five. Oh, and pfft, look at that. Yes, he blocked the two. Then Mandy's lore is four, so she'll be rolling with all five dice. Come on, Mandy! Ah, she has no clue tokens to use, so she takes one face down horror. That's okay, that's her only one. If you suffer one or more horror, oh dear, you feel something... Uh, you feel something... No, oh... I had a little trouble with the sentence there. You feel something notice your awareness and are transfixed by a power you cannot see. Become restrained. Mandy cannot move again on her next turn. Oh, dear. Well, it's okay. We're probably going to attack the witch anyway. And the mythos phase. Um... Tell you what, yeah, let's do, let's do one more. One more turn. So we're going to, uh, let's see, let's have Mandy attack first, because she's got those brass knuckles. So we're going to choose the witch in the app and attack. All right, unarmed, and she'll get two extra dice. It lunge at your foe's legs in an attempted tackle. Strength test, two results needed. That's fine, that means she will be rolling four dice. Come on, Mandy. Oh yes, three success. If you pass, you catch your enemy off balance and the weight of your body carries it to the ground. The monster suffers damage equal to your test result plus one. Well, that is enough. The witch only has three, and Mandy just did one, two, three, four. Good one, Mandy. T took that rhymes with witch down. Wait a minute. Anyway, uh, so we are discarding the witch right away. That was nice and short. And that was... Uh, Mandy's first action, she can't actually move as a second action, so, um, yeah, let's uh, do a trade action and hand over the lucky cigarette case to Dexter, so they each now have a lucky item that um, works well in, oh yes, which works well in rolling. Ah, should have thought of that. However, she did succeed.
I was not thinking there. I think I'm going through this too quickly. I will attempt to slow down. Uh, so yeah, that gives us Mandy's actions. So, Dexter is going to move. I'll tell you what, we're going to move him into this room to maybe open up another door. Let's just remind ourselves what the doors are. You're allowed to do this at any time. Right, the door leads to a small front room of the mansion. This one. The door leads deeper into the mansion. I su suspect that's where we need to go. And this leads deeper into the mansion. All right, so let's have Dexter go one. And let's say two. And we will open up that door. Which will be his second action. The door opens into a dim hallway that winds through the heart of the mansion. Place hall corner two and hall end tiles as indicated, and discard uh, all explore tokens leading to this room. Uh, so I will cut away for a moment and find those tiles. All right, there we go. We placed the two tiles. We will remove this explore token as well as this one because we have exposed the area. Now let's see what else turns up. A wooden desk stands against the wall. Place a search token there. Someone acting in a hurry has knocked over a stack of papers. Place a search token as indicated. Yes, you can actually see the papers on the floor there. And three doors lead to other rooms in the mansion. Place explore tokens here, here, and here. Uh, you could use the surrounding furniture to barricade the door should the need arise. So we have another barricade over here. You may move one space into the explored area. Well, we might as well. Let's get moving. All right, uh, that concludes the investigator phase, so we will do one more uh, mythos phase to end the turn, and I think we will um, wrap up the video there. So let's just see what horrors await us. Oh good, hissing and weaving like a serpent, a rope rises up to wrap around Mandy Thompson. Test agility, two successes needed. Her agility is three, and this time I'll remember that she has the lucky rabbit's foot, because she has not used it this round. All right, we need two. All right, she'll use her lucky rabbit's foot to re-roll one die, and it didn't help. Ah, all right. If she fails, the rope wraps around her and begins squeezing the life out of her. Mandy Thompson suffers two damage and becomes restrained. Uh, I actually forgot to take away the restrained at the end of her last turn, but it doesn't matter because she has it back. And now we will have two face-up physical damage. First of all, we have minor injury. Only a, It's only a flesh wound. Resolve immediately. No additional effect. Flip it face down. And the other one... Oh! Same thing. Minor injury. We got lucky there. I mean, she still has... Uh, she and Dexter both have half physical damage. But um, no lingering effects from it. And that is it for the Mythos phase. Yes, I think we should probably wrap it up there. I think we went through three different rounds. Um, so yeah, thanks everybody for watching.
thanks uh, for everybody who subscribed and uh, any likes and comments that I've had on any of the videos. Thanks for all of that. And uh, we will see you next time when we will continue investigating the cycle of eternity.